Hola amigos, que tal? How's it going guys? Um, we're gonna cook today. We're gonna cook right before your very eyes. We're gonna cook some uh, delicious chicken stock as I promised in the last tape. So let's get right to it because I don't have a lot of time. So um, you get yourself a chicken. Usually for chicken stock, you'd use just like bones and scraps and so forth. But today we're gonna use the whole chicken at least for part of the, the time that we're cooking it. And uh, so first off, just gonna open this sucker. Again, said this many times, but I'll say it again. Let me make sure my mic's on so you can hear me. Um, when you're making chicken stock, or anything with poultry. You want to make sure everything stays clean of the juices because uh, poultry tends to carry a lot of bacteria so you don't want any cross-contamination, you don't want it touching any other food that's not going to be cooked. And you want to try and keep your hands clean. Whoa. Hello. Just trying to get the gizzards and stuff out of here. Just one second. Hold on, baby. I'll be back. Don't worry. There we go. Okay. And we're going to get a cutting board ready there. I'm going to rinse the chicken off in cold water. Rinse out cavity. Get rid of some of the fat. Alrighty. Okay, Mr. Chicken. Hello, people. Hello. Sorry. So anyway, okay, we're gonna cut this sucker up. Cut it up. Into let's see what one, four, five, five pieces. Go ahead and take the skin off the breasts here. How's it going? How you been? What's new? It's exciting. Okay. And we'll cut the breasts. Sorry, I'm not going into more detail about how to cut up a chicken here, but kind of in a rush. But um, we'll do that. Eventually, I'm going to have a cameraman, and uh, then we can get some extreme close ups. And I can go into a little more detail about stuff. So you're just going to want it. One thing I will tell you, you do want to trim away some of the excess fat and skin. And then, uh, we're going to let, the, actually this chicken stock is going to simmer for like three hours. Can you believe it? So um, we don't need to cut it up. Usually what you would take like a cleaver and maybe cut up the bones into like, uh, 
uh, one and a half or two inch pieces so that the stock will get a lot of the flavor out of them. But being that we're going to boil it, or simmer it rather, so long, um, you don't really need to do that. Because by the time it's done simmering, um, the uh, bones will almost be disintegrated anyway. So, as I said, make sure to wash your hands really thoroughly whenever you're cooking with poultry. It's very important. Okay. So, I'll get out my stock pot here. Hello. All right. Got our good old stock pot. And, uh,. We're gonna just wanna go ahead and put all the chicken in there. And actually, you know what, we're gonna do two things today. We're gonna make this uh, long simmered chicken stock. And uh, we're also gonna make a relatively quick chicken soup from it because I've got We've got to have lunch ready fairly soon now. And the chicken soup isn't going to be as uh, richly flavored as I like because the stock isn't going to be simmered that long when we eat the chicken soup. But that's okay. It'll be a light chicken soup. Actually, you know what, if you make a light chicken stock, you can uh, give it a uh, sort of an Asian flavor if you add like, instead of adding, we're gonna add like, I don't know, probably six cups of water to this, just enough water to cover the bones by about an inch. Um, but instead of adding all the water, you add like three cups of water and, well, maybe four cups of water and like two cups of sake and then put some peeled ginger in there and maybe some star anise. And you get just a really nice Asian flavor. Hey! Stock. Okay. Pressure's on, can you do it? Onions! Okay. Onion. You want an onion? Let me clean off the knife. Get yourself a couple onions. And since this is just simple stock, we're not gonna have to cut off, cut up, cut up anything um, very finely. So we're just gonna like half and take the this the papery skin off. It's good enough. Good enough. Alrighty. Stock is something. Oh, I hope we have enough water. Shoot. Let's see. Stock is something you're gonna make a lot. Oh yeah, I think we got enough. Yeah, we got enough. Cause uh, st stock is such a like basic culinary item. Very important. Use it as a base for any sort of soup that you want to make. And many sauces use the chicken stock. Um, like if you're making uh, uh, cocovan, for instance, you, uh, which we'll make soon, but uh, to make the sauce, you just reduce, reduce uh, red wine with, uh, with a chicken stock, hopefully homemade. 
like ours. Okay, so I've just quartered the onions. Now I'm going to take some um, cloves, whole cloves, just like. Oh, let's see. Maybe four whole cloves, and I'm just going to stud the onion with the cloves. This is just, the cloves give the stock a great flavor, but if one gets through somehow the our filtration process, then it's not the most pleasant thing in the world to bite into a clove. It's not horrible, but it just real strong flavor. I'm going to cut these up a little bit more. But again, just real rough. You don't need to cut them up small or anything. Ooh, and they're making me cry. I'm crying, crying, baby, for you. Okay, okay. <sighs> um, so anyway, uh, okay, so celery. This is what they call a combination of aromatics like uh, celery and carrots and onion is called uh, in French is uh, mirepoix, which is a mirepoix is a real basic um, sort of universal ingredient combination for sauces and stocks and soups and so forth. And generally, the formula is you want to use two. Yeah, that's a little bit much. Two, uh, two parts onion to one part carrot to one part celery. And you can also use instead of onion, you can use leeks, which is really nice. Gives you a real nice subtly flavored stock. And the onions and I or the carrots rather, I'm not going to bother to peel them. Just going to. Scrub them pretty well. And again, not gonna be real dainty. Just gotta chop them. Alrighty. There we go. Be aggressive. Doesn't matter if they're big pieces because this again this is gonna simmer a long time. Everything will be plenty soft by the time it's done. Okay, and next what next kids? Next you can be real creative with your stocks now. Just you know add whatever you think would be good. Just fresh herbs, any sort of fresh herbs are good. I'm gonna add some uh, some whole uh, peppercorns, just about like a half teaspoon. I like it peppery, a little bit peppery. And let's see, we got bay leaf, add a couple bay leaf. You can turn it on, might be good. Add some bay leaf. Um, I don't have any fresh. Time, which would be really nice, but uh, I'm just going to add some dried. You know, at about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. And we're not going to add any salt yet. Do that later. Um, I got some, remember I told you you couldn't find flat leaf parsley, good Italian parsley here? Well, I went to Iowa City and I got some, so. So put some few parsley sprigs in there. Yummy, yummy, just dump them in there. Okay, let's see, what else can we put?
don't have any ginger. Um, let's see. That'll be about it. That's about all we're going to put in our stock, and we're just going to bring it to boil. And I'll go ahead and take a break now, and I'll be right back. Just don't you worry, just sit tight. There won't be a commercial, I'll just magically reappear. And, uh, and we'll continue. Okay, baby, see you soon. Hey guys, I'm back. How you doing? Um, so we'll continue today with what we started, which was, uh, if you can remember, we made a chicken stock. And uh, one thing, I told you that when we put all the stuff together for the chicken stock yesterday, we were gonna let it simmer for three hours. Should bring it to a boil, um, and then turn it down to a simmer. And uh, if you remember right, we, uh, we put like uh, whole pieces of chicken rather than just bones in it. So, um, and that whole chicken we're gonna use, we're just gonna cut the meat off the bone and use it for our chicken soup. We're gonna make a, make a chicken soup today. Ah, come on. So, um, what you should do is you should bring it, bring it to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, let it cook about 30, 45 minutes or so until the chicken, the whole chicken that you put in, the whole chicken pieces are completely cooked. And then you're gonna want to remove those. So we'll just find all the whole pieces of chicken in here. And this is, I, I let it simmer for three hours and then I put it in the refrigerator. Always make sure you cool it down before you put it in the refrigerator because uh, it won't necessarily hurt the stock at all to put it in the refrigerator right away, but it'll, um, it'll dramatically increase the temperature within your refrigerator so some of the stuff that you have in there might go bad quicker than it would otherwise. Okay. So, just gonna pull those whole pieces of chicken. We had some legs that we threw in there, legs and thighs and, and two big chicken breasts. So we're gonna pull all that whole meat out. And the rest. Looks like the rest might just be bones in there. Yeah, pretty much. Whoa, there's a leg. The legs, well, we can clean them. Um, Cause these are, or I mean the wings rather. Cause these are pretty big wings. They got a lot of meat on them. But oftentimes the wings are so small that there's no point. Just use them for the stock. Just use them to flavor the stock. Don't bother to pull the meat off them. Come on, where's that little wing? I know you're in there hiding. Ah, uh, heck with it. So we'll just leave that other wing in there. He got away. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm gonna turn the stock back on because I'd like it to simmer a little bit. It should really, it should really simmer until the bones are pretty soft. So this could probably go for another hour or so. But anyway, okay, so we got our chicken here. We're just gonna remove it from the bones. Actually, let's go ahead and prepare our vegetables first because we're just gonna make a quick chicken soup. And also, along with the chicken soup, just for lunch today, 
I'm going to make a green salad with the poppy seed dressing and uh, and some uh, I'm going to have some hard boiled eggs in the salad so I'll show you the many people have many different ways to boil eggs and uh, some with good results some with not so great so I'll show you pretty much a fail safe way to hard boil an egg because what often happens with uh, with hard boiled eggs is that you get um, you know you get that green sort of color in between the yolk I always use filtered water around here because uh, tap water is scary but you get that green color between the the yolk and the white and that comes from uh, from a chemical reaction that occurs when the egg cooks too much or well, too much or what too, when it cooks too much and a uh, simple way to avoid that we're going to put take our eggs and I'll do like four of them and this also, uh, th another, this method also prevents another problem that happens with hard boiled eggs. I'm going to put them in while the water is cold. Put them in very gently so the shells don't break. The other problem is that each egg contains like a uh, air sac. And if it heats up too quickly, if it heats up, if it gets too cooked, you're going to get that green stuff. And if it heats up too quickly, then that uh, air sac will expand too quickly and it'll, it'll bust the shell. So, way to prevent both the green and uh, the cracking of the shell is to put them in when the water's cold, turn the heat on high, and as soon as it boils, turn it off. And then let them set until the water is cool enough that you can reach into the water and pull the eggs out and they'll be perfectly perfectly hard-boiled. Okay, so we're gonna make a quick chicken soup here. Hello. And to our chicken soup, we're just gonna add whatever vegetables we like. I'm gonna, let's see, what do I got? Got some broccoli. We got some celery. What else do we got? That's about it. So, broccoli, celery, and, oh, hello. Onion and garlic is what we'll add. You can also, we didn't add this, but you can to your stock if you'd like it, um, add a, a garlic clove or two. It's always good. I like it, and I hope you do too. The in crowd likes it, believe me, so you better like it. I want to be part of the in crowd. Okay, so we got our, our garlic, 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 garlic. Me like you a lot of garlic, so I'm going to put in three whole cloves. See, I'll use uh, like one a large yellow onion. Okay, so I'm melting, as you, as you may have noticed, I'm melting some butter in there. And I'm gonna add, I'll get about a tablespoon of butter. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of uh, nice extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna grab my knife. My knife is back. I found it. If you remember a couple of shows back, all I had was that little dinky parry knife. It was a real pain. But now I got my knife back. So anyway, I'm gonna cut up this onion and let's get these out of the way. Now, maybe or maybe not you remember the way to, to dice, simple way to dice onions. But we'll do it again if you don't remember. It's okay, no pressure. Just gonna 
going to peel half the onion, leave the, the uh, root end intact, and uh, horizontally put like three slices in there, and then vertically slice it, trying to keep it all intact, and then perpendicular, ver vertically again, but uh, crosswise this time. So we can just cut our dice. So, so you get really nice small dice there. And as we as I said before, this because the crying comes from the sulfonic acids that are released when you cut through the onion's membranes. Um, this keeps the onion in fairly intact for the longest period of time and uh, so you don't you won't cry as much unless you're sad whoa okay butter's getting a little bit too cooked there but that's all right it's a little bit brown that's all right i just was not paying attention It didn't get too brown, though. No, it's about the it's about the color of the the brown butter sauce that we made for the broccoli actually the other day, which is fine. So, go ahead and add the onion there. Stir around. You do have to keep an eye on butter though, because it does it does tend to to brown and burn quickly. Garlic, we'll just crush them lightly to get out the skins off. I love garlic, baby. Ooh, I'm crying now from the onion. Boy, that hit me by surprise. One of these days we'll have to make, I get, make a great garlic, baked garlic soup. Really nice. Perfect for a winter day. Get those hormones pumping. Keep the viruses away. Hey, you know, I gotta come up with like a Emerald's got his old, um, you know, catchphrase, the BAM thing. I had to come up with my own. Let's see. Let me think of one. Oof. I'm crying. These, these onions, I, I don't, you see like the uh, advertised in the stores is sweet sweet onions and uh, I don't know I think it's kind of a ripoff because uh, the sweet ones are so much more expensive and they're only sweeter because they don't have as much sulfonic acid in them once this once you cook them and the sulfonic acid burns off actually sometimes the cheap cheapest yellow or white onions are actually end up being sweeter than the, the ones that are advertised as being sweet if you're gonna eat them raw, yeah, then those would be better. But I always just buy the, you know, 60 cents a pound, whatever the cheap yellow onions, and they turn out really nice when you cook them because all that acid burns off. Okay, so we're just gonna cut up some broccoli. Now, broccoli, you can use the stems. You don't need to throw it away. To use the stems, the center, the green center is really good, really nice. Um, what are you gonna wanna do? I don't have my peelers, so it must be elsewhere. So, you can do it with a knife. All you wanna do is slice off the, the tough green outer core. 
outer core. Tough green, outer skin, whatever. The outer core. Was the inner core. And it, you're not going to get much out of it, but, but still, I mean, you, it's better than throwing it away. And some people even like this inner part better than the florets. It's pretty tasty. I don't know, it's a hard decision, but it is pretty tasty. Okay, um, and as you're sauteing your onions here, actually I can turn this down because I want to add some carrots and celery to it. And we're just gonna, two carrots, maybe one celery stalk, wash this off. Okay, so our Eggs are boiling, I'm going to turn it off. Turn the one off. Wash the carrots here. Okay, and I'm just going to julienne or rather I'm going to dice the carrots, of course, to dice them I have to julienne them first. And I don't know if you saw the, the show where I did this, but it's very simple. Just, uh, you're going to want a flat surface because you don't want it rolling around, you're going to hurt yourself. You want a flat surface and then you're going to cut it really on the bias diagonal. So you get chips, you get like oval chips like that. Um, just like potato chips. So, cut the whole carrot like that. And then we're just going to stack these, these carrot chips. We're going to cut them into julienne. Julienne is like a matchstick. Different sizes of julienne. It's really small and thin and thicker. And then the julienne, if you can see, the julienne, we're going to stack them all together here and then we're just going to cut perpendicular into dice so we get little squares. There we go. Keep going. Watching. Pay attention. It's very important. Ooh. Excitement. Excitement on the cooking show. You never know what's gonna happen. What will happen next? Oh my god. It's all diced up. I was just going to eat one, but with the mic right here next to my mouth, it'd probably sound like an earthquake or something to you guys, so... I won't put you through that. We're just going to make a small amount. All right, I'll cut off the ends of the celery. The celery. And we'll do the same thing, just slice it up, dicer.
Okay. So we can go ahead and add this to the onions and garlic. This is our mirepoix. If you remember correctly, mirepoix is uh, usually one part carrot, one part celery, two part onion, or leek. And we've added some garlic to it as well. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that up. And at this point, if you're using dried spices, you always wanna saute them with your mirepoix because you want, that'll bring out the flavor. And it may seem like odd combination, but to me, for my chicken stock, I like to add a little bit of dill, or for my chicken soup, rather. A little bit of dill. Maybe some thyme. Don't worry, no puns. I won't make any puns about time. I am not a pun man. And a little bit of rosemary. Rosemary. Where do you be? And saute this brief, briefly. How many syllables can we put into the word barif? Barfly. So tired. Alrighty. Alrighty. She's going. Sauteing up there. Oh, in the meantime, okay. Um, enough of that. Meantime, we're going to go ahead and remove the, uh, the meat from our chicken and just tear it up with your hands. Just get right into it. Get all messy. Tear those suckers up. Nothing worse than getting a chicken soup and seeing like, well, I mean, within context, I suppose it's all right, but seeing like uh, perfectly diced pieces of chicken. Kind of scares you, makes you think it might come out of a can or something. And then once you've removed all the meat from these bones, you can just go ahead and throw them back in the stock. Don't throw, just throw away the skin because it's not going to do anything for you. Mm. And you can, you'll be able to smell the, the herbs, the dried herbs starting to give off their essence. So let's see, what, what kind of emerald-like um, catchphrases can we come up with? Let's see. How about, uh, let's see, Waka! Was that good? Waka! Uh, that's not so great. Um, maybe, uh, uh, let's see, I'll think about it. I'll get back to you, all right? So clean it up there. Throw the bones back in the stock. Of course, all that emerald stuff's probably copyrighted. I said the B word when adding an ingredient, I would probably be sued. It's messy business. Okay. 
so we got all the meat that we want for this little small batch of soup we're making. Just going to add it to our pot here. So real simple, quick chicken soup. I'm wash my hands. And now I'm going to just strain some of our stock out. Oh, it's a beautiful, really rich golden stock we got here. Really flavorful. And so good for you on these winter days. Yummy, yummy. I love it. Nothing like soups, man. Make soups all the time, please. Please. Just do it. Drive me crazy. I try to tell you. Okie doke. So, got ourselves a nice thick chicken soup there. Lots of nice herbs in it. If you have some fresh herbs, by all means, use them. Great things. The great thing about fresh herbs is that it's dried herbs. You can really overdo it. Fresh herbs is a little more difficult. You can't overdo it like. I've added too much fresh rosemary to things before because I love rosemary. But, um, you know, sometimes enough is enough. Okay. Excuse me one second. Okay, I'm back. So, let's see, pretty much the soup is done. Uh, I'm just going to heat it up here a little bit more, bring it to boil. Oh, actually it's not done. You know what? Because we forgot to put the broccoli in. Jeez. So put the broccoli in. And bring it to a boil. Broccoli. Um, usually the, the proper time for broccoli to cook is no more than seven minutes. So, just want to cook that up. Don't go beyond that point because nothing worse than overcooked broccoli. I mean, there are some things that are worse, I suppose, but. Okay, so this the stock's starting to boil. I'm going to turn it way down to simmer. Clean up here a little bit. Still with me? Okie dokie. All right, clean our board. Now, care of your cutting board. I always use a wooden cutting board. Some people are paranoid about wood because they think that bacteria hide in the pores of the wood and are dangerous and so forth. Um, I've read a lot to the contrary that actually wood somehow is safer because the uh, just the bacteria do go into the pores, but but they don't seem to come back out. It seems like they perish in there for some reason. I just like wood. But you got to keep it clean. You got to keep everything clean, of course. And it's a little bit difficult with a wood um, cutting board because uh, if you get it too wet too often, and especially if it's near heat, it'll warp. So, the wet, a couple ways to prevent that. Just when you're cleaning it, just use a damp rag. Don't immerse it. Never immerse it. That's something never to do. Never immerse it in water. Just use a damp rag. 
And you can also keep your board oiled if you'd like, which is good. Um, just get some mineral oil and lightly oil it up and that'll keep the wood well, uh, what's the word, lubricated I guess? It'll keep it well, you know, it'll keep it healthy, all right? And uh, keep it from warping and so forth. So anyway, okay. So we got this, what else we're we gonna make now? Oh yeah, we're gonna make our salads, our green salads with poppy seed dressing. I'm just going to get out some salad bowls here. And I've got some nice organic um, mixed greens here. Mixed baby greens. It's got arugula, um, looks like hickory, all sorts of nice stuff in there. You want mixed Baby greens are really nice because you got a real variety of flavors amongst greens. You got there's some dandelion greens in here. You got wonderful like bitterness and spiciness. They're really great. Um, and usually, you know, usually I'd put this in a big bowl and like toss it with a dressing, but I don't know. I'm feeling kind of lazy today. Aren't you? I don't know why, it's just like a lazy day, you know. In fact, you know what, I'm jonesing for a cup of coffee, so let me, if you'll excuse me one minute. I'm going to grab myself a cup of, cup of cafe. Cafe con leche. I'm going to put some heavy cream in it too. Yummy. I love heavy cream. Still good. Yeah, 11. It smells good. It's fine. Okay. Whoa! She's boiling. Her soup is boiling. Turn it way down. Just turn it down to a really low simmer. Just enough to cook the broccoli. That's all we wanted to happen. And uh, mix up my coffee here. Okay, kids. Sorry about that, but you know. Gotta take a break. Mmm, yummy. So I think the, wow, ah! The water's still too hot for our eggs. So let it cool. And uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and make the poppy seed dressing. It's really easy. And it seems to, people really enjoy it. They'll love you. Love you for making it. You'd be the most popular kid in class. So we're going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And we're going to put some honey. Get a little honey bear going. Get that honey in there. Um, it's like, uh, see for about two servings, uh, be like a teaspoon and a half apple cider vinegar, a teaspoon and a half of honey. Um, gonna add some, uh, just a little bit of Dijon mustard. See if I can get me out of here. Almost empty. Okay, that's enough. About a teaspoon of, uh, a little bit under a teaspoon of, of uh, a Dijon mustard. 
okay? And then we're gonna put like, a, say, two, three tablespoons of olive oil. And, oh, that's not right. Um, poppy seeds. About a teaspoon of poppy seeds. Okay, and dressing making. Dressing making involves a very important concept in cooking. It's called emulsification. And emulsification means a suspension. Oil and water don't mix, right? Um, well, when you're emulsifying, you're performing the miracle of suspending water molecules or is it oil molecules, water molecules within an oil, which uh, it does, uh, doesn't usually want to do. But anyway, it's easy to do. Um, the secret to emulsifying, I mean, you can emulsify just vinegar and, and oil, but it's not going to hold together uh, very long. So if you're going to just use, if you're just making like a vinaigrette, just a, a vinegar, a flavor vinegar, sherry vinegar, raspberry vinegar, whatever, and olive oil, um, you just add uh, the vinegar, oil, um, salt and pepper, and if you want to add some herbs or something like that, and just make sure an emulsify it or makes it right before you use it because it's not going to hold. Um, but if you add a little bit of mustard to it, then it, it'll hold for a while longer. So, this dressing, just going to want to really vigorously, you can do it this way with a fork, or you can also do it if you got like a jar that seals tightly, you can just mix the hell out of it. Just shake it up. Shake it up. Ooh, ooh shake it up. Yeah, 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 shake it. So anyway, okay. This is emulsified, I don't know, as you, if you can see it, you probably can't, but it's like, all cloudy and the oil is all mixed together with the vinegar and so forth. And you get your poppy seeds all suspended in there. Okay. So let's see if we can... Wowie! They're cool enough, we can pull them out. Still pretty hot though, I'm gonna run out of cold water. I'm running out of time here kids, so I just want to show you, you know, Show you old eggs. And I always suggest, of course, free range eggs. You know, you know chickens should be happy. Happy chickens. Okay, so peel it. Alrighty then, so go ahead and we'll, I'll just wash off this knife. And we'll slice this sucker in half. Oh, look at that, that's gorgeous. See, there's no green. It's a nice, bright yolk. It's a perfect fail-safe way to, to hard boil an egg. You don't have to worry about timing it or anything. Just keep an eye on it. When it boils, turn it off. And pull it out when it's, uh, when you can do it, when you can, it's not too hot to touch. Just mix that in with our salad there. Okie doke. Okay, I gotta run, kids. So, um, soup is done. I'm just gonna plate it up. Salad's done. We got the, the poppy seed dressing. Um, and as you can see, we got some beans soaking because we're gonna make some really exciting soups soon. We're gonna make, uh, probably tonight I'll film it. We're gonna make a homemade chili, a really nice red bean homemade chili, um, white bean and uh, collard green soup with roasted garlic, um, roasted garlic, oh, so good. And we'll also make a lentil soup with chestnuts because chestnuts are in season. We really want to use those, they're really fantastic. So anyway, okay, I gotta run for now, but I'll see you soon. Okay, ciao. Hey guys, are we recording? 
Yes, we are. We're back. Hey, we're back. Yay. How you doing? How you doing? Um, soups. We made, we started soups the other day. We made a chicken stock. We made a great chicken soup. So today we're going to continue with that theme and we're going to make a, a great uh, white bean soup. White bean with collard greens and uh, uh, what else? sweet potato, onion and garlic and so forth, all that good stuff. So anyway, um, chicken stock. We got our chicken stock that we cooked the other day, if you remember correctly. And uh, one thing when you, after you've cooked it and you refrigerate it, make sure before you put it in the refrigerator you let it cool way down. You don't want to bring the temperature of your refrigerator way up and make the other stuff go bad. So let it cool down. You can use an ice bath if you want. I mean, don't put the actual stock in ice, just in a container that's bigger than your stock pot, fill it with ice and water. And uh, actually, you know what, a little secret, you can sprinkle salt over the top of that and uh, some sort of chemical thing. Can't remember exactly what it is, but it makes the uh, the coldness from the ice distribute itself better and, and whatever it is you're trying to chill will chill down much quicker. So you can do that. Um, but once you chill the stock, it's gonna, you're going to get a layer of fat on top, which is good. You want, you want that. And uh, you, if you should leave it on there while the stock is refrigerated or, fill, or um, freezed or whatever, because uh, that'll go ahead and seal the stock and keep it nice and fresh. Um, but once you're going to use it, go ahead and scrape that fat off. And you'll also notice that your stock probably will have gelled. So you just want to heat it up a little bit just to, to sort of degel it. Um, and then we're going to strain the stock. Where's my strainer? There it is. So we'll strain it. Strain it into this container here. Oh, in the meantime, I got my white beans. I got like, uh, what was it, like two cups of white beans, two and a half, two, two, two and a half cups. Um, to degas beans, you just want to soak them overnight. Um, soak them in filtered water. Overnight, you may want to change the water if you notice like a lot of bubbles on top. That's the gas coming out of it. You may want to change that water halfway through the soaking time. And then when you get up in the morning, go ahead and and bring them to a boil and once they've come to a boil actually all right um they're strained overnight pour off the straining water or or the uh, soaking rather water rather so, uh, pour that off and uh, refill it with clean filtered water and then boil it and then strain it you know and then pour that water away okay so once it comes to a boil go ahead and pour that water off and the rest of the gas should be out of them by that point and then you can go ahead and cook them in whatever recipe you got so let's go ahead and strain the stock here strain all the meat out of it and vegetables and so forth go ahead and let it strain there a little bit Meanwhile, we can go ahead and prep for our soup. Um, we got uh, chard here, red chard. So we're just gonna cut it up, just kind of roughly. You don't want too big of pieces, but you don't want really small either. So just go ahead and cut it up. The stems are pretty tender on this particular chard. If you come across kale, like the stems are really tough. So you don't want to, you don't want to be, actually there's a few tough ones in here. You don't want to be eating the stems, they're too tough. So you just want to pull the, the nice tender leaves away from the tough stems. Chard is usually, it's usually pretty cool to eat the stems if they're not too thick. Because if they're too thick, they, they're too tough. But this looks pretty good. And I'm in a hurry, so heck with it. Just want to go ahead and cut that up, put it in a bowl. Um, we're going to clean it. Stuff like greens, you really got to you really got to clean them well because they, the leaves will carry a lot of sand and dirt and stuff. And there's nothing worse than mouthful of grit. 
Also, if you're buying like, like spinach, you know, not the pre-washed spinach, but actually just buying regular spinach, you gotta really make sure and wash it well, like soak it in like three or four changes of water because you gotta get rid of all that grit. There's a lot of it in spinach. So, okay, we're just gonna let our chard soak there for a little bit. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna want an onion, one large onion. And we're just gonna dice it like, like I've shown you before, very easy. Slice it horizontally three or four times. And vertically. And then we're gonna just perpendicular. I just always get so emotional when you guys are around. Okay, so we've got a nice diced onion there. We're going to want a few cloves of garlic. It's just improvisational cooking, baby. roughly mince up this garlic here. Peel the sucker. we're making. That's the only way to do it. If you don't make a mess, you're not cooking. Right? Am I right, huh? Okay. Sweet potato, we're going to cut it into dice too. And the way we're going to do that, remember you always want a flat surface to cut on, so go ahead and Cut off a side, one of the round sides, so you can get a flat surface there so it doesn't move around. And just slice it a long way. And get more flat there. And you just continue slicing it the long way. There we go, kids. It's very easy. And I'm just going to stack the slices. You remember we did this with carrots. And wasn't that fun? You remember? We had so much fun with the carrots. Okay, I'm going to cut it into medium small dice. Stack these again. Go. 
go. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, our potato's done. And uh, the white beans are just starting to boil. Looking good. So we're gonna take our, our cast iron skillet and we're gonna go ahead and heat it. Throw some oil. And regularly I'd use fresh rosemary, but I don't happen to have any at the moment. So we use a little bit of rosemary and I'm gonna put in a little bit of dried sage too. Be really good garnished with I don't I don't happen to have these so we can't do it but with garnished with uh, fresh fresh uh, sage leaves um, fried to a crisp which is very easy to do just heat if you got some fresh sage leaves just heat some oil in a pan heat it till it's pretty hot and then uh, go ahead and put in your sage leaves and fry them until they're nice and crisp but not you know burning or anything and you can just fry them up like slices of bacon then you can put those on a paper towel and drain them and they're really good if you to garnish stuff with really nice and tasty as you can see our beans are boiling so I'm just waiting for this oil to heat up a little bit here it's probably hot enough so I'm just gonna put in the onion you can also use leeks really nice in this recipe Doke. Go ahead and get this sizzling up here. In the meantime, we can go ahead and drain our kale. Or kale, I mean chard. This recipe is also good with kale, though, if you want to do it that way. Leave it up to you. drain a little bit and as you can hear our uh, onions and garlic are starting to sizzle here you just I mean, the rule usually is you don't you want uh, the, when you're you know this very common thing to do with many recipes to saute onions and garlic first off and uh, when you're doing that you just usually want to you want to watch the garlic because you don't want the garlic to get too brown the garlic starts to get like dark brown black and it's going to have way too strong of a garlic flavor. Um, so you want to wash the garlic and you just want the onions to be like translucent. Um, so you don't want to, you know, like overdo it. I'm always a big promoter of caramelization as you know, I'm sure. If you're watching the show as you should. And you know that I always talk about caramelization. It's probably like annoying the hell out of you because I talk about it so much. But these beans are pretty much almost there. Yeah, they're getting pretty soft. Cooking beans. Never add salt to the beans before they're fully cooked. Because salt will prevent them from softening. So. Again, for some mysterious chemical reason that doesn't come to my mind right now, so I'll have to look it up in my culinary dictionary and let you know the exact reason. But anyway, what was I talking about? Um, I'm a big fan of caramelization, but uh, garlic you want to really watch 
onions are, are onions are really good if they get a little bit charred, but and they add a great flavor. And sometimes some recipes you, you do want them pretty dark brown or almost black. I mean, not sliced ones. Like we'll, do, we'll do things with different sauces and so forth. We'll, we'll just take a nice, um, really nice high quality onion, just slice it into fairly thick rounds, and and really caramelize it and uh, then add it to a sauce that maybe we're going to puree or something. And that'll give you a really deep, rich, wonderful onion flavor. Yeah, the beans look done. So, but you don't want, you don't want that to happen with garlic. So. Okay, so now our onions are starting to get translucent. We're going to add the sweet potato. Okay, and we're going to add some spices because, as, as you remember, we want to usually want to saute our spices to help bring out their flavor. A little bit of sage. Be careful with sage. It can be really strong, especially the dried stuff. Always best to use fresh, but don't happen to have it at the moment. So I'm going to add a little bit more oil because it's getting a little bit dry. So let's taste one of those beans and make sure they're done. Mm -hmm. Really nice, tender. Absolutely no flavor because there's no salt in it, but actually a little bit of flavor. Excuse me a second. So, um, yeah, salt. I mean, you're not going to get much flavor in anything in, unless you add salt. Because salt not only adds its own flavor, saltiness, but it also is an agent which brings out the other flavors that are sort of potentially in the food but not coming out. Like... Uh, I mean, you can have a soup made with all sorts of herbs and so forth, but you won't really taste the herbs until you salt it. This doesn't mean you want to oversalt things, but you do want enough salt, unless you're on like, you know, some sort of salt-free diet or something like this. But um, you do not want enough salt to bring out the flavors. And that's what, I mean, I don't like this stuff so much because I don't know if, you know, there's really actually anything physically harmful about it, but monosodium glutamate, that's what it is. It's a flavor enhancer. I mean, as I said, I don't use it, and I, I don't like to eat it so much because it kind of gives you a weird feeling. But um, it's simply, I don't think it has much, I mean, I've never tasted a spoonful of monosodium glutamate, but um, I don't think it has a flavor itself. It's just a flavor enhancer. It just brings out other flavors, makes them more intense. Like I said, I don't know if it's really bad for you or not. I mean, the Chinese eat a lot of it, and they seem to be fine, so... but. I just, I don't like it myself. So, anyway, what shall we do now? We have our sweet potatoes that are cooking. They're cooking up nicely. Actually, it's probably about time we can go ahead and add the kale. Kale, I keep saying kale, the chard. Now, greens, you really don't want to overcook greens. You just want to basically just wilt them. Just cook them until they become wilted. 
And a lot of greens will wilt and cook up a lot quicker than others. Like spinach, you can basically just, when the soup's done, add the spinach and it'll cook without any heat on it, on the soup for, you know, just 30 seconds or so. But things like chard takes a little more time, not much, but a little bit. And kale takes more time than that because it's a tougher, it's a more, you know, tougher textured green. Kale is really fantastic though. It's really pleasant, pleasantly bitter. So, I'll just go ahead and translate to you guys the, the olfactory experience that I'm having at this moment, which, due to the fact that our medium does not transmit it, you cannot experience, but um, this, the smell of the sage is just fantastic. I love sage, it's one of my favorite spices. It's really good in tea, like if you just want sort of a, a glandular stimulant, just take some hot, boil some hot water and put like a few sage leaves in there. It's fantastic. Okay, so now our chard is wilted. And I'm just going to add some of the chicken stock here. And I'm just going to go ahead and let this boil until the, uh, the sweet potatoes are nice and tender. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and pan fry uh, chicken breast. Chicken breast. To go along with this, I'm just going to, I'm going to pan fry it, then I'm going to cut it into thin strips. And when I serve the soup, I'm serve it in a bowl. Nice white bean soup. It's really good. Yeah, well, we'll do it. Well, I'll show you. Um, if you take, after the soup is made, you take a little bit of it. And uh, actually what I'll do, is be before I add the white beans to, the, to the, this stuff, I'll uh, go ahead and puree, puree some of the white beans in their liquid. And so we it's a real creamy, nice creamy soup. You can always do that with pretty much any soup. If you want like a thick, nice thick soup without adding a roux or, or some other thickening method, um, just puree some of it and put it back in. So anyway, we're going to grab the chicken breast. This is something I do all the time. It's a real basic sort of cooking technique, which is just with the chicken breast here. I'm just going to debone this breast. It's just to uh, pan fry it. And you can use it like you can use it in like a chicken Caesar salad. Now chicken breast, I don't know if you can see this close, um, but usually when you have the breast, you have two pieces there. And one piece contains a, a little white um, piece of like fatty vein that you want to take out of there. It's really easy to take out. Um, just grab onto it, take your knife, grab onto that vein, take, take the knife and just, I said it was easy, just scrape back until it comes off. There you go. Okay, and if you want the breast to cook up quickly, I suggest you, well, first of, first of all, first of all, first of all, cut off, cut off your head for the chicken breast. And first of all, cut off some of the fat, excuse me, from the chicken breast. Um, and we're gonna, what we're gonna do is butterfly it, which makes it cook up quicker. Got a little bit of bone left on there. Get that off of there. Butterflying, very easy. Just take your chicken breast, lay it flat. You can do this with any sort of cut of meat. And holding the knife horizontally in the middle, just go ahead and slice through it 
as you're slicing through it, you can peel it back. And then pretty soon you got yourself butterfly chicken breast. Got a little bit of silver skin there, gonna cut that off. Okay. All right, and uh, usually with meat, you want to, before you pan fry it, you want to salt and pepper it, and you can even like rub some herbs or spices into it if you want, make it more interesting. So we're just gonna, not, no herbs and spices this time, just uh, simple salt, kosher salt. I always use kosher or sea, sea salt or kosher salt. I use kosher because it's, it's easier to gra grab with your fingers and portion it out. As I said before, kosher salt is a little less salty than sea salt, so you don't want to use or you want to use more, actually. That's the way it would work, isn't it? I think so. And then always fresh ground black pepper. Never use the box pre-ground stuff. So we'll go ahead and do that to both sides. Get a little bit of fat there. Pre-salting like this is it's great for the flavor. I mean, it's best if you actually let it do this and let it sit for a little bit. Um, but it also, what it does is it brings the juices to the surface, brings the, sh the uh, sugars to the surface and makes it more, uh, more willing to uh, caramelize, which is what you want. It's the essence. The essence, that's like an emerald thing, right? I better stop saying that. Yeah, like Emerald's gonna be watching Fairfield Public Access. Who knows, maybe it does. It's spare time, you never know. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead, uh, put some extra virgin olive oil in the pan. Go ahead, go ahead and heat it up until it's pretty hot. You don't wanna, you don't wanna, when you're searing or pan frying, uh, Meat, you want your oil pretty hot before you put it in because you don't, you want it to uh, fry and not steam, so. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and, as I said before, we're gonna puree a portion of our beans with some of their cooking liquid. So, we just stick in the Grab our little scooper thing and put some of the beans in there. Oh, yummy! Go ahead and put them in the blender. Puree them up. And I think maybe our taters are getting pretty tender. Yeah, they seem to be almost there. Maybe just a little bit more. But the, our oil is definitely ready for the chicken, so grab our tong. Don't grab our thong, grab our tong. And uh, go ahead and Fry her up. Should always, the oil should always be hot that you hear that beautiful sizzle. Sizzling, sizzling, sizzling sound. Let me put the meat in there, okay. Alrighty. Now, very important step, take a drink of water. Cheers. Okay. 
Okay. And I think I think our sweet sweet potatoes are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the pureed beans. And I'll go ahead and strain the cooked beans here. And let's see. Be careful when you got water around the frying pan here that's really hot because if you get any drops of water in there it'll splatter out at you. I love my cast iron skillet, I gotta tell you. I do everything, I bake in it, cook everything in it. It's just a versatile little piece of kitchen beauty. Oh, that's gorgeous looking soup there. Okay, and that chicken's probably brown on the one side. We can go ahead and turn it. Oh yeah, nice. You want it to be nice and brown. You don't want it to be dry though. And in the meantime, usually I would save something like this and some bones for stock, but we just made stock, so there's enough for a little bit. And you don't want poultry to be sitting around your refrigerator too long. It tends to go bad pretty quickly. Okay. Just wash off my cutting board here. Don't forget to do it. You gotta wash everything when you're dealing with poultry. Gotta keep everything clean. Okay, looks like our chicken's done there. When it's butterfly, it cooks up pretty darn quick, so don't need to overcook it. Don't want to overcook it. You want it nice and moist. Seared, caramelized on the outside, but nice and moist on the inside. Okay, so we can go ahead and season our soup. I haven't added any salt or pepper, so I'll be fairly generous to start with the salt. Add some pepper. And stir it around a little bit. Distribute the salt and pepper. spillage. No, no big whoop. All right, we'll check, check it for seasoning. Mmm. Oh, that's very nice. Very nice. So, guess what? It's done. Can you believe it? So I'm just gonna serve it up. Go ahead and get my makeshift ladle, ladle here. You know, they say it's good for you to cook in cast iron too. I mean, you get, I guess, some of the iron gets into the food. So, which is a good thing, I guess. It's supposed to be. Good for your bones. Okay, so we got chicken breast there. Go ahead and wash off my knife.
slice it up pretty thin. It's real nice and tender, which is great. Okay. And then you can just sort of put that on top there really nicely. And if you got some fresh herbs, if you got some parsley or something like this, you, I mean, nice Italian parsley, flat leaf, you might want to mince that up and go ahead and garnish it. Um, you can also put like a fresh uh, rosemary sprig or something like that on it. But there you go. There's another great soup. Um, white bean, uh, red chard, sweet potato, onion, garlic, and uh, top with some freshly uh, seared uh, chicken breast there. It's great stuff. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, talk to you soon. Ciao.